final round. Fight! I will uninstall the game if I lose to this thing. Let's start from the beginning. If you play Gundam Breaker 4, or are at least familiar with the Gundam Breaker series, then you know it's a game where you can make almost whatever mobile suit you want. Unlike in some RPGs, where certain pieces of armor or weapons require certain skills and stats in order for you to equip them, here, even if some parts or weapons have no business going together, even by insane anime standards, you can still equip them in the same suit. There's really no wrong way to play the game. But, what if we want to challenge ourselves by placing some limits on what we can do? If you've been following me for a while, even those who claim they've been following me for a while, but only ever comment when they don't like something, then you should know that I'm a big fan of the Gundam RX-78 NT-1, otherwise known as the G4, or as it's more commonly known as, the Alex. Now, the Alex has made it into several Gundam games. Most of the time, it's nothing really special. I imagine it has to do with scaling the arm Gatling cannon, so it won't be so strong that it'll break the game, but also making sure it's not too weak. By the way, in an earlier video I mentioned that SD Battle Alliance has a cheesy intro. After replaying Extreme Maxi Boost, I take it back. Extreme vs Maxi Boost has an intro so bad it would make a 14 year old edgelord cringe and then realize, oh, so this is why girls don't like me. Anyway, as I was saying, the Alex, at best, is just okay in video games, but in Gundam Battle Operation 2. <laughs> In Gundam Breaker 4, the Alex on its own is pretty basic, just like most suits in the game if you don't mix and match them with other parts from other suits. It has its own beam rifle, and lore-wise, it has a bazooka, which we can just use the Gundam's hyper bazooka to fill the role of. Then there's the iconic arm Gatling cannons, one on each arm, which do okay against low-level grunts, and they recharge fairly quickly. It also has the standard head Vulcans that almost never get used. Let's also not forget about the beam savers. Not all that great, but can easily lock an enemy in an endless melee combo. Lastly, there's its standard EX melee skill. And that pretty much sums up the Alex. We have a lot of work to do. Okay, here are the rules for this challenge. Number one, 
The Alex needs to keep all its parts. We cannot swap out any parts and replace them with parts from other mobile suits. This also includes weapons. We can only use weapons that belong to the Alex in the lore of the Universal Century. Number two, we cannot use any mastered skills from other mobile suit parts. The only exception to this rule is if we want to use a skill from the Alex CA, since they're essentially the same mobile suit. And number three, we can only add builder parts to improve the Alex. First things first, level up all the parts as high as we can. None of my parts are maxed out here to level 50 for two reasons. The first is that I'm a little stingy with my plastic parts in case there's another build I want to make. And the second reason is because none of my parts were at level 40 when I first completed survival on solo. Time for the fun part, the build of parts. For crowd control, I went with the 6-2 missile pod and equipped two of them since they can both be fired at once. Next up is the double satellite cannon for when fighting the big bosses and also mostly because I've just been itching to try it out ever since I got it. I then added the Mercury Level A Sword Unit 3 because we only have a limited number of build apart slots available and this part comes with two skills. To fill up our fourth EX skill, I next equipped the Solar Reactor which will give us a little added boost in speed and mobility. Taking up the seventh slot, it's the Heat Saber since it's fairly small and won't make the Alex look too bulky and it would also help me get up close and personal with the added melee skill. And lastly, we're going to add an arm grenade launcher on the left arm directly under the shield to make it look like the rocket is being fired from the shield instead of the arm. With all the parts equipped, we can now add our new skills and test them all out. Here we have the 6-2 missile pod, trans -Am from the solar reactor, heat saber, arm grenade launcher, arm gatling cannon, mercury level A sword unit 3, standard EX melee skill, and lastly, the double satellite cannon. Kind of reminds me of Vegeta's final flash attack from Dragon Ball Z. Now, we're really ready to test the new Alex in survival mode. Round one, fight! Alex performs fairly well at the beginning, many of its best moments being whenever I relied more on the beam savers. After wave 5 was when I noticed a bit more resistance from the enemies that weren't exactly low level grunts. Some of the grunts themselves were also able to get a hit in once in a while. As for the feel of the Alex, it did feel a little off with the skills and parts I added. Nevertheless, I pressed on, took out another boss at wave 10, and made my way to fighting off the shark counterattack era mobile suits. Not sure why the devs decided to make these mobile suits appear in an indoor stage though, since Char's counterattack takes place primarily in space. But nitpicks aside, I move on, taking out the suits from the unicorn films, and eventually I find myself facing another boss in wave 15. Perhaps the first real challenge for me was Wave 17, where 5 XM01s from the Crossbone Vanguard appear all at once. They're not exactly difficult, but they can be annoying. 
Wave 18 also wasn't too bad. The only real obstacle to overcome was having four enemy Gundams spawn right in front of you the moment the wave starts. After that, however, it's business as usual with more endless melee combos. Wave 20, of course, is yet another boss. Which took about two minutes to take out. Mission cleared. Let's keep going. Another five waves later, and it's the big zombs turn, which took four minutes with the current build that I have on. Also, my very first attempt in survival ended against the big zomb, so I tend to be a little extra cautious whenever facing it now. With all my parts being roughly around level 40, I'd say wave 26 is when I noticed a slight spike in difficulty, as it now took a little longer to take out the enemies. Wave 27 especially had some annoying enemies that like to spam missiles and get you on a stun lock. I also never liked the design, so that only made them extra annoying to have to look at. The Cosmic Era was up next for waves 28 and 29, and this is where the real obstacle of survival showed itself to me, that obstacle being time and attrition. Getting through all 50 waves takes a long time, and it can be challenging trying to keep focused. I did pause the game every once in a while and stretched out my legs, which did help. Wave 30 eventually came around, and while I have no issue fighting against a giant RX-93 FF new Gundam, I did find it puzzling that the devs decided to not include the Cycle Gundam instead. Again, just a minor nitpick. Anyways, although 5 minutes isn't a long time, it definitely felt longer this far into survival on Solo. Another 5 waves later, and we run into one of the Gundam's biggest enemies of all time, a giant SD Gundam, or whatever it's called. The entire time fighting it, I was thinking to myself, I will uninstall the game if I lose to this thing. As if. Get that heinous thing out of here. Wave 37 is where the game stopped pulling its punches, and the enemy started to really learn the concept of stun locking, which was not fun for me. For the most part, however, it was still all fun in games. Until the Gundam Meister showed up. The most difficult of the four being Exia. Since it is a melee focused suit, it tended to sneak up on me a couple of times, so I had to really focus on taking it out first. I did eventually take it out, fortunately, and finished what felt like the fight of my life in Gundam Breaker 4. I breathed a shy of relief and readied for the next group, but then the other X he has appeared. It's been over 15 years since I last saw Gundam 00, so I'm not exactly sure on their names. I think one is the 00, and the other is the Razor, I think. And all I know is that they're both piloted by Setsuna. You would think two enemies would be easier than four, but <laughs> Not in this case. Getting them in an endless melee combo wasn't even possible because they would either break free or be bailed out by the other. After several close calls, I was finally able to take out one of them, leaving just one left, and I had the win within sight. I just needed to keep my eye on the ball. But then, against all odds, it managed to break free from my attacks and got some cheap shots in. Well, maybe it'll be another 15 years before I watch Gundam Dub Below again. Okay, let's try that again. First off, as much as I like the double satellite cannon, it does take up two build apart slots for just one skill. So, we're gonna have to reluctantly replace it. We'll also be replacing the arm grenade launcher. In its place, we're gonna add another crowd control option with a pair of 5 2 missile pods. Now, I know equipping another pair of missile pods pretty much defeats the purpose of replacing the double satellite cannon. To make up for this, we'll be adding the IFS unit, which comes with one EX skill and one OP skill. Lastly, the Heat Saber will be replaced with the large anti-ship sword, since I think it's a better melee weapon and should help to open up enemies to melee combos. To show off the new skills, here we have both pairs of missile pods being fired back to back. Now for the anti-ship sword. 
And here's the IFS unit's EX skill. Doesn't have the same range as a double satellite cannon, but it can be very useful up close. It also doesn't use up as much points. Time to give it another try. Things were going okay for the most part, and I was making progress in a slightly shorter amount of time than in my first attempt. Until I hit a wall. Quite literally. As in, I got stuck and had to start over again. Okay, one more time. The IFS unit is actually pretty solid, but I miss having some range capabilities. So now we're gonna go with the anti-ship beam launcher. This also makes a little more sense, since now it's a little similar to the Gundam Unit 4, and both Gundams did exist at the same time during the One Year War. This will mean, however, that we'll be down one OP skill as an option. But, seeing as how I don't necessarily utilize all the skills, equipping the Head Vulcans back won't make too much of a difference. To make up for this loss in skill, we'll be getting a little creative with the Beam Sabers. You see, in most cases, regardless of the mobile suit or what series it's from, a pink Beam Saber is just that. A pink beam saber. Therefore, we're not really breaking any rules by equipping the Lacerda beam saber, which I think is actually the Freedom's beam saber. I think. Anyway, what makes this one different from all the other pink beam sabers, you may ask? Well, it also happens to be a twin blade, so when I hold down the melee button, this happens. The only downside is that it's not exactly an endless melee combo because it's tied to your thruster gouge. Aside from that, it works exactly the same way as a regular beam saber. And as far as the rules that I place for myself, there's no reason to assume that such a beam saber wouldn't be possible in the Universal Century, where the Alex is from. In fact, the Hainu Gundam has such a beam saber as well. Either way, the beam saber on the left arm is just a regular beam saber. So we can just think of the one on the right as an extra builder part. And even though the solder reactor is just a builder part, we can also think of its Transam skill as an alternate version of the Exam or Hades system. But, of course, I'm not allowed to use those skills for this challenge, because we're not allowed to use mastered skills from other suits. With all that out of the way, one last time. Final round, fight! In a short amount of time, I eventually found myself right back where things ended the first time around. Overall, my changes to the Alex this time around were minimal. Really, what I think helped was the fact that I ended up leveling up some of the parts and weapons a few levels. They're still not maxed out to 50, but many of them are now over 40. The new beam saber did help a little as well, but not by much. I eventually got revenge from the first time around, and finally moved on to wave 38. Which, let me just say that waves 38 and 39 don't get any easier. There were more than a few close calls in these. Also, the game for some reason doesn't register your ground breaks most of the time once you go past wave 37, and not getting those instant kills can make things more difficult. With the ground break not always working, I often felt like just enduring through endless melee combos was the better choice, which then made the waves go for longer, and thus also led to more attrition. So, by wave 40, I was feeling a little tired. 
Wave 40 is a one-on-one -on -one fight against the Neo Zeon. Unlike in the campaign, or at least in the lower difficulties, where the Neo Zeon doesn't deploy its arm funnels, here in survival, they're pretty much always flying around shooting at you. For the most part, I was able to dodge its attacks, it really only being able to hit me with its cheap shots. The safest place to attack was on its back. The only downside is that it has a really good turn rate, and its funnels can also follow you behind it. In the end, either because of bad luck or poor decision making from playing through 39 waves, I made a big mistake. I got behind it and was on the ground at a distance. I fired the anti-beam launcher for what seemed like a simple shot, but then the Neo Zeon turned around and took me out with one hit. And that was that. Maybe the IFS unit would have been a better choice. A fully maxed out Alex could have also made the difference. So is it possible to make it through Gundam Breaker 4 with the base Alex, with some builder parts tacked on? I think so. Despite not being able to make it a wave 50, if I had done things a little differently and leveled up my parts to at least 45, it could in theory survive. One more thing before I go. Normally I don't like talking about this, but my channel is now selling its free subscriptions for half off. So it now costs 50% less to subscribe for free. That's right, free subscriptions are now extra free. No other channel on YouTube offers this great deal. So push the subscribe button now and get this exclusive deal. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. See you all in the next one. So what's your impression of the Alex? How do you like the 360 degree monitor and the magnetic coating? It's so fast, I'm not sure. Can someone really handle all this during combat? I guess it depends on the pilot, I suppose. Oh, so you think I'm not good enough for the Alex, huh? Simmer down. Uh, this thing's specially built for new types. You're good, I'll give you that. But I think this thing's a little out of your class. You have to be some kind of freak to control this thing. I hear they'll be sending it over to some pilot on white base. 